Right. Uh, now hold on, we take care. I want to bring all the people. I want to bring all the people in here, just Mr. over this side. Here. Sorry. Uh, you, you <laughs> absolutely. I'm keeping you as my secret weapon <laughs> because they don't know who you are, but I do. <laughs> I come from Oma, and Oma's not in the frac zone. But if you can speak to my neighbours, where I've walked my dog and where our family grew up, Kevin McCall, the gold mine, regulation. Speak to those people. The other point is a very emotive point about jobs and the downturn and recession. What happened to the Green New Deal? The potential to have a huge amount of, you know, sustainable local jobs immediately. And the last point is democratic. This is fantastic and fair play to you for putting it on tonight. The vote that many people were, were here to watch in the debates in December are democratically elected MLAs voted for a moratorium. What happened to that? Okay, good point. Uh, who's coming out? Uh, Ross, you've been try, trying desperately to get in, so I'll let you go do that, and then I'll come back to you. I want to bring back in, we do have Charles Westner with us, and just to reassure Charles, I will let you introduce yourself in a moment, and I would like to hear your, your response, and Susie, you might do it as well, but just, so I'm coming to you, I just want to get the view across, okay? Ross. Just a few points. Um, Terry, I think you, you clearly highlight only the studies that you know, that say that fracking is safe when you, for example, the AEA study, which um, uh, Gary highlighted earlier on, has said there's a high risk to fracking, and the Tyndall Centre have said that uh, there's a significant risk of ground and surface water contamination until the evidence base is developed, a precautionary approach uh, should be taken. So that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is that the framing of this debate, and it, it's been framed in the media, it's been framed here, as if it's the, the problem that we face is that the fractures um, and the, the contamination should, uh, is likely to go through the fracture from the, the frac zone, but actually that ignores the whole aspect of this, the whole life cycle of the whole process. For example, I've got um, statistics in front of me that show that 5% uh, of wells leak in their, in their first year and 60% of wells leak over their lifetime. If you look at the Gulf of Mexico, 45% of wells right. have integrity there. issues. And just one more. Terry, you can come back. Quick, quick guy, take the microphone. Thanks. Sorry. I can say to you there about Pennsylvania, the Department of the Environment, uh, protection in Pennsylvania tested water in seven rivers, seven rivers to which treated wastewater from fracking wells was discharged. They found, and I quote from the report, all samples were at or below the federal drinking water standard. Okay. It's basically a scare, but I do have sympathy for the lady from Fermanagh that uh, the, the gap between aquifers and the fracking process should be uh, up at least 0.6 Kilometers. There you go, you get right. support. I, I did promise to come back, but I've missed out over here. I beg your pardon. So, by the way, if you want to tell people who you are, it's okay. Uh, you know. Michael, Michael Walker, um, Institute of Food Science and Technology. Three simple points. Decision making should be made in public so that we can see what's happening, and this is a great example of it. Second point, I'm really concerned about the uh, regulation. The Royal Society report was clear. Robust regulation is needed for this to happen, and I'm really concerned that the regulators find that that's not happening. Third point, um, agri, the agri-food sector is the real growth sector in, on the island of Ireland. Anything that puts a stain or threatens the perception of that ag sector as unpolluted and safe is a big risk for this country. Okay, okay gent gentlemen over there, I see you here. Anybody in the back down that you're all, I see some folk, Jamie, just watch around over there, but I'm going to go here and then here, right? Okay, my name is Michael from Belfast, North for Shield. Uh, Mike took the, the words right out, of my, out of my mouth when I was talking about regulation. I don't think we do regulation very well in Northern Ireland with, you know, with regards to the, uh, the recent incident with the, uh, the Oma mine. But uh, just one point I want to say to Sandy, you equated the problems associated with the uh, wind turbines and it's tr maybe in some way you, know, you, you compared them with fracking. I think the problems with fracking, if they go wrong, if it goes wrong, is a lot more serious than the, the problems that, would that could be associated with the uh, wind turbines and renew renewable energy. And I have to agree with the, the last speaker there that they, uh, we should play to our strengths. Fragging is uh, potentially very, very dangerous and it puts our major sectors at uh, serious risk, tourism and agriculture, and for money it relies on both very heavily. So I think we should not take the risks. And I think fragging was one contentious step too far, I think. So. Okay, good point. Just, Sandy. 
clarify, I didn't, I didn't mean certainly to, to imply that the risks associated with wind turbines are anything like the risk associated with fracking. My point was that, that wind turbines aren't an easy solution because there are difficulties with them in terms of danger to, to wildlife, in terms of people not wanting them, and in terms of the carbon that goes into to building them. So, so I'm just saying that renewables aren't sitting there ready to be plucked off the shelf. Base load, right? We have a certain capacity we actually have to have, and that's called base load. And that rises at 5 o'clock. When people go home, we have to accommodate that. If we don't have renewables functioning, we still have to have that base load, or none of you have your telly, your cooker, your okay. anything. Got that. John? Yes, I'll just make um, one quick point in terms of the, the wider geopolitics of this. I can't see uh, wars over wind turbines. <laughs> We have seen wars over fossil fuels. It's a larger issue, but this is the political context we should face this. And I do welcome the fact that people of good faith can disagree. This is a very uh, emotive, and there's not, no shame in that. It's about facts, it's about values, it's about what type of society you want to live in. Again, it's a resolutely political issue, and this is a great way in which we can try and engage in this debate. Because to me, this is a bigger issue of Leitrim, Fermanagh, Roscommon, Sligo, and so on being affected. It, it, it goes right to the heart of the integrity of the scientific process in, in politics. I agree with that point. <laughs> Gentlemen, over here, a microphone just behind you. Jimmy, oh, okay. There's some folk up there as well. Uh, right, go ahead. Sorry, I'm John Sheridan from. Yep, just speak up and we'll, we'll, we'll take our chances. I'm John Sheridan from Fermanagh. Uh, I'm a farmer. I, uh, you have, you have uh, lectured 40 years. I have lived and farmed 40 years in Fermanagh, uh, round the caves and the lakes. That's what it's uh, synonymous for. Uh, I work uh, at Northern Ireland Agricultural Industries worth 3.9 billion. In the ROI, it's worth over 16 billion euro. Countless jobs in it. If we blow the water in Fermanagh, we could blow agriculture in Ireland and cost it 25 billion for the one and only industry that's moving forward. We have two aquifers in Fermanagh, thanks for the goodness Magella's here to show them. If those aquifers are mixed with saline water, uh, uh, seawater we understand is about 3%, I think. Uh, uh, if we hit the flow back, we're going to have around 25%. Uh, chemicals don't really matter, the saline is enough to ruin the water and the drinking water. Agriculture, uh, we, we are producing uh, dairy farms and, and, and dairy food in Ireland uh, is, is going to produce up against 80% of the milk powder in the world. And we cannot afford to take 600 okay. jobs. I just I have to have to because I want to get a few people out. <laughs> Hold on, Tech. I will just make a point to everybody that Everybody deserves applause in this bit. That we are here for a proper debate, as uh, John was kind enough to sit and say, that uh, of course people want to be enthusiastic, I'm all for that, but everybody gets a bit of respect. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Russell. Thank you for the debate this evening. Uh, my name is Shirley Davy. I'm Chair of the Institute of Materials in, in Northern Ireland. I believe that uh, ministers should explore with gusto all initiatives which have the potential to improve the wealth and health of the population in Northern Ireland. In cur current economic times, with much manufacturing regrettably moving to eastern countries, I believe that fracking could be a real, viable and practical means of improving the wealth of citizens in Ar Northern Ireland. However, the impact of fracking should be thoroughly investigated. Risk analysis should be carried out, particularly in relation to aquifers. There was an aquifer under Queen's University, Belfast. Didn't stop them building the David Kerr building, okay? And as NASA knows it, anybody who works for NASA knows, just because we do not know is not a reason not to go. Facts and values are not separate, as anybody, like I have, who studies mode, science, mode 2 science will know. Health and wealth are not disparate polar properties. Increases in wealth can ultimately result in improvements in the quality of life for the local population. Phil, I'll dedicate them to you and then down to the back. So, Phil, yeah. first. Just, just very quickly, and, and I missed that lady's name, I'm sorry, but the, her, her, Shirley, her opening comment spoke about ministers need to move in, in, in gusto to, to do anything that can help improve a, a nation's wealth or health. But then later on, she said that we need to take all the facts on board. The two things don't correlate because. But before we know how, how bad fracking potentially could be, it will be a generation. So we okay, can't move got, quickly got on. Got the point, Phil? Peter? I would just say that, okay, uh, con that. Agricultural, uh, agricultural work is probably the major source of contamination in aquifers. So that needs to be taken aboard. Yeah. Contamination by nitrates, contamination by effluents. Uh, no, no, hold on. He has the, he's got the floor. Just like, go on. And so that, you know, 
that is also very important. The nitrate problem from, uh, from excessive use of fertilizers is one of the major issues with groundwater in the UK and the Western world. Okay, take, I'm going to take here, then down here, Jimmy, please. Oh, come around, we want Kieran. Just, just take this gentleman here, but bit up here. Hello, I'm Gareth Jones, the past president of the European Federation of Geologists and the Institute of Geologists of Ireland, and a proud uh, graduate of Queen's as well. First of all, congratulations on the way you've put all this meeting together. I think it's very healthy, and you're doing the right si uh, thing. You're looking at the two sides. As long as you have science-based decisions being made from this process, then you're bound to come to the right position. I take the political argument as well. Um, it's probably worth just remembering that this is 50 years, almost to the day, the gas was first found in Ireland, just across the border in County Cavan, and 31 years since a, a well was first fracked for gas in Ireland. So we've done a lot of this work previously. Um, one of the things that the IGI is doing is taking a watching brief on this, and we see around the world a lot of governments being very hesitant, as they should be, doing initial reports, reviews of what's happening, and now these reviews are just beginning to come in. And they generally take the same sort of thing, saying there are problems, there are things which must be looked at very carefully, but if you get the regulation right, and especially with good practice, then you've got a chance of going ahead safely. Thank you. Thank you very much.